Joining me now on the program is Senator Kane to continue the discussion on New Jersey Transit. Thank you so much for joining me today, Senator Kane. Great to be with you, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's a privilege to have you here because you have been around transit a long time in New Jersey. You have a lot of knowledge about how New Jersey transit works. And you and I were talking off camera that it's not just about New Jersey transit, but we're mm -hmm. going to start there first. And mm -hmm. then you can break down some of the complexities for us. Okay. Um, but George Lukacs, who normally does this show with me, we mm -hmm. met with Executive Director Kevin Corbett. Um, and we talked about how he's making different changes around New Jersey transit. And I think he's a really thoughtful man. And he's trying to do the the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, but from your perspective, before we jump into that, can you just talk a little bit about how did we get here right. in terms of New Jersey transit? How do we get to a point where everybody feels like it's just, it's to the point of no return? Well, we've got to mm -hmm. look to turn the corner. Mm -hmm. And I, I will agree with you, the cabin was a great pick. He understands how to manage. He understands he's got a long history in the industry, and I think he can work hard and do the day-to-day -day operations that, that you need at New Jersey Transit. But again, this has been decades in the making. When you look, when you look across the river at the LIRR or at the Penn Station or you know, bus terminal in, in Manhattan, a variety of these things have taken decades to build up to where they are now. And this is not a new problem. I mean, I've served on the Legislative Oversight Committee where we recognize these problems five Eight, you know, five, six years ago, trying to find the additional solutions to this core problem of the commutability of New Jersey. But this is a long-standing problem that we now have to, got to work on a bipartisan basis to find a solution. Yeah. Well, let's talk about how New Jersey Transit, first of all, you know, I think you had mentioned that Governor Murphy gave $28 million mm -hmm. to fund Jersey Transit. Um, but I feel like when you look at all the things that are happening, we need, they need money for safety. They need money mm -hmm. for hiring people. Um, they need to upgrade old equipment. Mm -hmm. $28 million, while it's generous, is still not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. And so Jersey is in a financial crunch. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of big issues that we need to think about. And so how do we can we get more money for transit? I think it's such a, an economic issue for us. And so how does that all work? Well, I, I think well, the budget process has just started. Mm -hmm. The governor made his recommendations earlier this year in March, and we have until the end of June for the budget process to go through. And we need to increase funding for New Jersey, New Jersey Transit because you need to send a signal not only to the homeowners and the businesses in the area, but to everybody who wants to understand and realize that New Jersey needs to be more commutable. Mm -hmm. and that, that we are truly going to invest in our infrastructure. So no, more money needs to go there. There are ways that we can identify whether we change the health and benefits reforms in, in New Jersey at the, over course between now and June, you'll be able to identify and free up half a billion dollars worth of resources that can be better prioritized for long-term priorities and, and long-term savings for the taxpayer. But we need to prioritize you know, making sure that we actually fund our infrastructure, make sure New Jersey Transit has the engineers that needs because right now you have a situation where there's a bad contract and for these current employers who are engineers and they are able to take free vacation times with about an hour's notice mm -hmm. and so you've got uh, so when you have these problems on Mondays or Fridays or other holidays yeah. or you shut down you have an entire system shut down because of one individual causes a systemic problem so I've been leading the effort to try to have real reforms over the course of the last several years and we've got some real structural efforts. We've got some real audits that have found some, I think, solid solutions. But now we're in the process with a management front. And the executive branch has got a lot of responsibility going forward with willing partners on both sides of the aisle to get this thing done right. But we have to make sure we have the management done right, the employee count done right, the, the how you, you know, buy new trains or work on other infrastructure issues in a timely fashion because we have to show New Jerseyans and people who want to move to New Jersey with their families that it's a, not only an affordable state, we've got a lot of work to do on that front, but also a commutable state. Those two things are priorities for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, the big question is, and this is sort of, I feel like um, everybody talks about this is the Gateway Project. Mm -hmm. I really think that as of late, we don't have any funding for the Gateway Project, but New Jersey Transit is ready to put money into the Portal Bridge. Mm -hmm. So for those viewers out there, the Gateway um, Project, it includes Hudson, the Hudson Bridge, yes. it includes the Portal Bridge, yes. and then it also includes upgrades to between Newark, 
Pan, Newark mm -hmm. Penn Station and New York Penn Station. So without the gateway funding, mm -hmm. this really, no matter what New Jersey does, we're not really going to be able to fund it in the capacity that we need to and, and make the changes that are required. Governor Cuomo, Governor Christie, and President Obama agreed on a new funding infrastructure for the Gateway Project, which is that entire infrastructure you talked about, which is between here and, and really here in New York City. And so we've, and the Portal Bridge is part of that. So what we're going to do from the Port Authority, the governor's efforts, is front load the resources for something like the Portal Bridge, which causes a lot of delays and really needs to be updated. So we're going to start paying things in advance and controlling things that, that we can control as part of the overarching Gateway Project. But we need real funding out of, this, out of the federal government for, for Gateway. The, the administration needs to keep the agreement mm -hmm. that they should pay for half the project. Governor Cuomo and Governor Murphy need to keep the agreement that they're going to pay for a quarter each. And we need to make sure that there's a strong effort both by, by Congress as well as by the executive branch in, in, in Washington, D.C., that the Gateway Project is a national priority. I believe it is. I think everybody in New Jersey and everybody across the country believes the Gateway Project is a national priority and should be treated as such. Yeah. Well, over 200,000 people go through that bridge mm -hmm. every day. And it's my understanding, um, you would probably know this number better than me, but it's about 20% of our U.S. GDP that mm -hmm. goes, you yes. know, the economic impact. And so to not... Yes. Up, up and through the Northeast Corridor, yes. Yeah. And you have, you're a Westfield resident, mm -hmm. so you have advocated even for as big of a project as that is, as the Gateway Project, mm -hmm. Um, Westfield struggles with the, on the Raritan Valley line yes. that there's not, a, it's called the one seat. Um, one, seat one seat ride off yep. peak. Yeah. So what everybody in, in, in a, on the Morrison Erie line and other places have on peak during mm -hmm. rush hour, we have off peak. And I was able to get secure that about six years ago. Mm -hmm. And the administration in, in New Jersey, Governor Murphy, uh, pulled that back a couple months ago. And we're now we're finding, make sure we get that uh, off peak and also try to get obviously real peak efforts through there. Mm -hmm. But we have to look at this as an entire systemic problem right now. And we need to have the right management at New Jersey Transit, at the Department of Transportation. We need to have bipartisan support in the legislature from a funding perspective. This is a priority because, again, our home values, our ability to be near our families. I mean, right now, everybody is making a decision in the next five years mm -hmm. whether they're going to stay in the state of New Jersey. Yeah. If you're a business, whether you're going to invest in the state of New Jersey. And if, they're, if they say in five years my plan is to leave, then everything, you know, tumbleweeds. Yeah. yeah, everything tumbleweeds, snowballs, and it creates, you know, you go off track more and more. What you need to focus on instead is saying, I'm going to be here for 10 years. And you need to have a plan that says this New Jersey Transit is going to be fixed long before then. You've got agreement on a bipartisan basis, working with the federal administration to make sure Gateway's funded. You need to make sure New Jersey Transit is funded. You need to make sure the engineers are held to task. Yeah. If you look at this and say, we're all working together on this, New Jersey becomes, over time, more affordable, mm -hmm. the, the, we are more commutable, and then people say it's more investable. And if you're able to say, I want to invest in my home, invest in my community, invest in my storefront, that's good for all the families who rely on New Jersey uh, business, New Jersey actually working day to day. Yeah. Well, and I saw a statistic somewhere, it's like 13 to 16 percent increase in property values mm -hmm. um you know they've done studies it, if you're near a train line then mm -hmm. your property values go up right. but i hear you talk a lot about bipartisanship and i just want to read something to you because i know you've worked on bipartisanship mm -hmm. um you introduced a bill recently um but i, I wanted to i actually just want to bring this up first on newjersey.com they reported um that during Hurricane Sandy, mm -hmm. it, the tunnel had sustained significant damage um, and that it's only going to take another storm, something similar to that, that potentially could put it out of commission. Um, and so recently, New Jersey Congressman jo uh, Josh Gottheimer and New York Congressman Peter King held a mm -hmm. press conference with um, Kevin Corbett, mm -hmm. basically saying we need to start working together and getting the money that's necessary. So talk a little bit about what are you doing from a bipartisan um, fashion? Because we need more people like yourself, mm -hmm. legislators who are standing together and saying, this is not a partisan issue. Mm -hmm. we, we are here to serve the New Jersey residents and keep them safe and keep it you know, economically secure. So right. who are you working with and what do you got well, going well, on? Well, we, we do it on both on the state level as well as on the federal level. I mean, Josh Geidheimer has been a leader on this. I mean, his district is impacted as much 
as any other person's district is. Yeah. And so he's been a real leader on the bipartisan basis. So I've, I've worked with Josh. I've worked with Rodney Freelingheisen when he was when he was in office. Been working together with the, the governor, with, with legislators on our side of the aisle and across the river in New York to say this need you know we need to put aside partisan differences. This is making sure that New Jersey is the greatest state in the union that has three generations of families wanting and being able to afford to live here. And that's what we've got to do on a bipartisan basis. Every piece of legislation I've put in in this regard and have gotten through has had strong bipartisan support. Working with Loretta Weinberg or Bob Gordon, who's now no longer in the state legislature, going around the state saying, this is what we need to do on New Jersey Transit, this is what we need to do on the bus terminal, this is what we need to do on, on Gateway, this is what we need to do at every step of the way to make sure that, that these institutions are accountable to the taxpayers. Because all too frequently people feel that, that the New Jersey Transit hadn't been communicating. Mm -hmm. They've got a, a engineers who take give an hour's notice and it cripples an entire line, and three or four trains then go out. I mean, people need to have something that, an entity that communicates, is responsive, that they can actually be predictable in where they're going to commute and how they're going to get to and from work. Because that's, we want to all be with our families as much as we can. Absolutely. And every single extra minute to hour, you're stuck on anywhere because the system broke down, whether it was the portal bridge or an en engineer skipping their day job, mm -hmm. that hurts us as a family and as a community. Everything we can do to fix that and stop those problems makes New Jersey a more affordable and, and better place to live. Right. We talked about moving money around mm -hmm. and um, making structural, financial structural changes in order to fund um, New Jersey Transit. Mm -hmm. Would you raise taxes if that's what it required to, to fix it? I, I think you, the, raising taxes is always the last thing you, that you want to look at. I mean, the mm -hmm. first thing you want to look at is making sure the commuters or the taxpayers are getting a hundred cents of value out of every tax dollar they put in. Mm -hmm. And people just don't feel that that's happening at, at any agency or at any level of government. So I think the first thing we should do is how do you constrain costs? How do you keep the promises that you want to make to not only people who are employed by state government and you know locally and at the at the federal at the state level, but also make sure you're keeping your promises to the taxpayers, property taxpayers and otherwise. So the first thing is, like I've made recommendations last year and this, to say platinum uh, health benefits back to gold, mm -hmm. for example, could save up to half a billion to a billion dollars a year on the state budget, which is a $34 billion budget. So if you can start to focus on ways to constrain the overall cost of government, then people have you know, greater f emphasis and greater perspective that it's actually working on their behalf. Mm -hmm. And then you can start to figure out ways to actually streamline and make government more productive. But right now, People just don't feel that it's productive and it's not making a meaningful positive yeah. impact in their lives when it should be. Right. Well, every time the taxes go up or every mm -hmm. time we get an a increase on transportation, we don't yeah. see the return on that money. And it's interesting that you say that um, my understanding is we get 82 cents per dollar for every dollar we send to the federal government. We get 82 cents back. It's actually 62. 62. It's 62. So is there a negotiating room in terms of getting more back on that in order to fix New Jersey Transit since we seem to be one of the biggest giving states to the federal government? Well, I, I'm always of the opinion you shouldn't send it there in the first place. Right. Right? I mean, right. first and foremost, right. you've got to say, what can we do to make some real changes? Mm -hmm. And you've got to make sure that New Jersey taxpayers are sending less down to Washington, D.C. Now, you looked at the most recent tax changes. And one of the things that I'm trying to, and it, that impacted the resident summits, summit because of the SALT mm -hmm. issue. Right. Very personally and very meaningfully. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying for a number of years to try to get a charitable deduction against your state income taxes. So that what happens then is, because I think not only do you help your fellow neighbors, but every other state, just about, that has an income tax has a charitable deduction. You do at the federal level. Right. And now, instead of playing games with what happened in Washington, D.C., I think that too many people in politics have now played games about what you can fund, what you can count as a charity, what you can't count as a charity, right. including paying for cops as, as part of a charitable deduction, which is no, no IRS or no to count and no attorney would allow for that to happen in real life. Mm -hmm. What you need to do instead is say, have this travel deduction against my, my income tax, and then you'll be able to lower the overall income tax rate for, for New Jerseyans, which means that the impact of the SALT will be less. Mm -hmm. Now, I've gotten it through just in the last couple of weeks, the Senate Budget Committee. Right. I'm trying to get it through the state Senate by the end of this month, mm -hmm. because if you have a charitable deduction against the state income tax, your income tax will be lower, 
you would then be also be able to help charities and throughout the state of New Jersey because what people are realizing is those high income donors are continuing to give. For those individuals who are intermittent or giving less than $1,000 or $2,000 a year to a charity are starting to dry up. Mm -hmm. And so what you need to, fo and that's impacting charities in Summit or throughout the region. Right. So what you need to focus on, I think, instead and controlling what you can control is we have to lower the impact of salt on the residents of New Jersey. You also then need to change the tax policy at the federal level to bring it you know, much more responsible in regards to the salt deduction. Right. But in the interim, we need to lower the impact on the income tax and the salt deduction for the residents of New Jersey. You know, that's a great note to leave on okay. because I think that's music to everyone's ears. Everybody wants to change the salt deduction. Yeah. So, yes. and I feel like we could talk about this all day. <laughs> but our <laughs> 15 could. minutes is up already. That we could. But um, I want to thank you so much for coming okay. today, and I hope to have you back mm -hmm. and we can do a much longer interview at some point. That'd be great. Um, thank you. Thank you. All right. And thank you for joining us today. I'm Lisa Allen, and this is Community Conversation. I was joined by Senator Kane. And if you would like to see more programming like this, please visit our website, Facebook, and Instagram. Have a great day.